guys, so it is my pre-op assessment day for my laparoscopy surgery that I'm having to excise all my endo. It's where they like take a few tests to make sure that you're going to be okay for surgery and if you need any special requirements. I'm having to drive down to Birmingham for it, which is a two hour drive away from here. And that's also where I'm going to be having surgery. And I'm planning hopefully on going shopping afterwards because I need to get a few things for my surgery and the ball ring in Birmingham is like amazing for that so yeah I'm gonna try and go there and um, see how we hold up and I'm so excited because everything's starting to open up again so all the shops and pubs because of obviously Covid um so yeah I might actually be able to go shopping just depends on how well my my old tummy holds up today <laughs> but um yeah I'm kind of excited but I'm also really nervous as well so I'll uh, I'll keep you updated I've arrived in Birmingham and I really need a wee really badly and I am quite early and I've got like another 25 minutes to wait so yeah <laughs> I hope they let me in soon because I'm gonna burst if not I'm less nervous now I've actually got here to be honest with you I was a bit nervous like the past few days and I can't tell if I'm like nervous and feel sick because I'm having surgery or I'm nervous and feel sick because of the whole process like I don't, I don't know which one it is um probably both probably a bit of both whilst I'm here I thought I may talk to you a little bit about why I am having this surgery and the reasoning is that I believe I have endometriosis and basically there's a lot of symptoms that I've been having over the space of like 10 years now that we thought was like fibromyalgia. So I got diagnosed with fibromyalgia when I was like 15. And I basically just kept having like loads of pain all over my body and I, no one understood why. And I used to, it used to like radiate from my stomach and I never, like I always had really quite bad periods but I thought that was normal because no one ever told me otherwise that's how I went for quite a few years and I was on birth control from a young age to try and suppress any kind of painful period symptoms. Well, over the past few years actually I've been in hospital so many times for pain like the pain was unbelievable like it felt like my appendix were actually like bursting on me um, and every time I'd go in they'd be like oh no like your, your appendix are fine like we can't find anything wrong with you and then they just send me home on a load of painkillers but like I was on the floor into like screaming like it felt like somebody was literally splitting me open and that's happened quite a few times now and they've just not found anything but like every time I had a blood test there would be indicators for like inflammation and no one would ever look into it and no one was really that bothered like everyone's just like oh you, you're too young to have anything wrong with you it got really really bad and it got to a point last year in January where I actually uh, woke up one morning with what felt like a UTI and so I went to the doctors and they gave me some antibiotics they didn't even test me for it they just gave me antibiotics and um, they told me if it got any worse to go to A&E and a week later I think it was a week or even a few days later it got so bad I had to go to A&E and they they suspected appendicitis again and they sent me home without they did a few tests and they were like yeah you've not got appendicitis we don't know what it is so i went back to the doctors and they they were just stumped they had no idea what was wrong with me at all they'd done all the tests they could and they had no idea and basically that's when i took it into my own hands and started doing my own research because i was getting so fed up of being in pain every single day and nobody knowing what was wrong with me so I did my own research and I found endometriosis online and at first I was like yeah but that doesn't sound like me like I don't just have painful periods and heavy bleeding like you know there's other things kind of incorporated with it and then I found a group and everyone in that group was like yeah no I'm in pain all the time and I was like oh shit okay maybe maybe that's me maybe that's maybe this is me maybe you know so I went into the doctors and said you know, I think I may have this, um, and this is why, here are my reasons, and she was like, right, okay, well, we'll send you for a laparoscopy, but you need to go through a gynecologist first, so they referred me to a gynecologist, and by this point, 
it had been like three months i was in pain every single day i'd been doing so much research i was struggling to work i was struggling to walk anywhere i was struggling to do anything realized that the doctor i was talking to the gynecologist was actually rubbish he didn't know anything about endometriosis he was like yeah i'm gonna do you a lapros laparoscopy but um like we don't actually like we don't actually do proper like excision surgery we just do ablation and if you don't know what the difference is ablation is where they burn it off and excision is where they take it out and if you just have ablation surgery they literally if you can imagine like somebody just like imagine some plants right and you snip off the top of the plants or burn off the top of the plants the roots still exist so you're not getting rid of the endo if you just burn it off so you should be having excision surgery but unfortunately in england um excision surgery isn't on the nhs like you can get it through certain doctors but the waiting list at the moment for me was going to be two years and i couldn't wait that long um so yeah here we are this is <laughs> this is why i'm here um i'm having my laparoscopy next thursday uh, hopefully fingers crossed if all goes well and let's hope that he can my surgeon can just get it out and i will never have to fucking see it again i mean even if we just get a few more years without being in pain to just live my life that would be extremely amazing and all i could ask for so i'm really hoping i've I found a good doctor unfortunately i've had to pay for it to um get it excised properly which we shouldn't be having to do in this day and age like there should be enough awareness and doctors willing to do excision surgery on people but unfortunately there isn't still a lot of theories that are out of date about how it even occurs and and how nobody knows nobody actually knows how it happens or where it comes from or why or we're just unlucky but you know what i'm lucky in the sense that i'm this has made me such a strong person i am so much stronger than i ever have been i'm so confident and it's it's put me in touch more with my body and to be honest like it is a curse but it's also a blessing so yeah that's my story i guess um yeah i guess i better go in soon so. so i'm back and i had my blood taken and just a general chat about how the surgery is going to go down and they gave me a bowel prep um to be honest it doesn't seem too too bad and i'm not allowed to eat anything from one o'clock that day until after my surgery which is the day after so i am going to be one hungry little gremlin i'm telling you that now i cannot go like a few hours without wanting food so here's what i'm packing for my hospital trip I went and got myself a nightgown from Primark and I need to wash this so that's why I've not packed it yet. Um, but it wasn't actually that expensive, I think it was like, it was like nine pounds. Um, so yeah, I got that, I just thought it'd be easier than putting on trousers. So I have baby wipes, I have two lots of biodegradable baby wipes actually. Um, this is for bowel prep because I've heard I'm gonna need them. Petroleum jelly. Apparently I'm gonna need this for my bowel prep as well. Understandably because it's gonna make me want to go to the toilet a lot. So this is gonna help apparently. I got some dry shampoo for the fact that I'm not gonna be able to wash my hair for a few days. So this will hopefully make me feel and smell a little bit better. Dulco Ease which is some stool softener um because apparently after surgery with all the pain medication and everything it can be quite hard to go to the toilet i also bought some wind relief for the gas when they blow you up <laughs> to um see inside a little bit better i'm bringing some pads just in case because i've been told that i might bleed afterwards i i've got some travel size conditioner and some shampoo and I also have some mouthwash because I'm not sure how many times I'm going to actually be able to brush my teeth. Um, I got some toothpaste as well, just in case. Um, some chewing gum because, my god, I know that when I do this bowel prep I'm going to be freaking hungry. So I need something to chew on to take my mind off the fact that I'm really hungry. 
Um, some soothers for when I wake up and I've got a sore throat from the tube. Some CBD oil. I've never actually tried this yet, but I'm definitely going to. I'm very excited to try it. Um, apparently it does wonders. So if this can relax me afterwards, that'll be great. And some ginger root that I got from Holland and Barrett for about £10, I think it was. Um, this is really good for nausea, apparently. Some peppermint tea. I've heard this is really, really good for the wind pain afterwards. Some whole grain crackers. Some pants. <laughs> some brand new pants. Um, some socks. My friends got me these from work. And I'm very excited because they're very soft. I'm going to put these on over the top of my compression socks. They also got me some slippers. And they also bought me this this nighty so I've got two nighties to bring with me actually and it says allergic to Mondays so yeah I need to wash both of those but yep yeah, that's basically all that's in my hospital bag so far um there's quite a bit more to go in and some food that we're bringing with us just things to make me feel a little bit better about the whole thing hello so it is the 19th of April and it's a Monday and I'm literally just setting off now to have my covid test and another blood test oh i'm so ready for it to be over now and just get me in that hospital i went down to birmingham today again and tomorrow and well today and tomorrow i have to clean the whole house wash everything make sure i'm good to go sort my cat out she's called bean actually where is she oh there she is are you okay down there? She's not actually ever been away from us yet. Um, we adopted her last year when we moved into this house. She's never actually spent any time away from us, so this week's gonna be really difficult for her. Like we've got people coming around to feed her and make sure, like, spend a bit of time with her and stuff. But um, yeah, I think it's gonna be really hard on her to be honest. I've got to start eating a low fiber diet tomorrow, so I'm not really allowed anything nice to eat. Just eggs and fish and white bread and rice. So. Yeah, but it's all exciting. I'm so excited. I just have a lot to do and get sorted. Um, but yeah, not really much else to update you on. So we are setting off to Birmingham now. Um, I'm a little bit anxious, but it's okay because today is the bowel prep day. Um, and I don't have to start my bowel prep till five, so I think we're going to be good. A little bit nervous, but I'm sure we'll be fine. <laughs> We're currently in the apartment that we were in like a, a city kind of like hotel apartment basically and Jack's staying here for the next four days and I'm obviously going to hospital tomorrow um, and he can't come with me because of Covid so um, I'm currently doing my bowel prep and it's I'm not gonna lie it's not great one hour later I miss I miss food I miss food so bad I was watching something on Netflix and the girl was making a cake and I was like bitch give me that cake because I am so ready for some food the hospital and I'm in my room and I'm in my lovely nightgown <laughs> um I've just been asked what I want to eat for the next few days which is quite a hard 
choice to make when you don't really know how you're going to be feeling. I'm a little bit nervous, but they made me feel really welcome, so. And I'm so glad that my room's got a really nice view. I can, like, look out. Um, yeah, it feels a bit weird being here on my own, but I'll be fine. So I'm just currently trying to get my socks on. They're very, um, very sexy, aren't they? <laughs> that, that looks about right. I'm going to have a surgery in about half an hour apparently. Both surgeons have come to see me. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm terrified. I've never had surgery before. I am so excited. I'm just so excited to be out of pain. Oh my god. So I will see you on the other side. Hopefully. Let's hope. We can hope. So I've been out of surgery for 10 hours now. And I'm doing okay. Um, it's, it, it's been pretty rough, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but we're doing okay. Um, not really managed to get much sleep. So the nurses keep coming in and out every like 20 minutes to do my blood pressure because it's quite high. Um, I've thrown up quite a few times, um, but I think that's just purely from the morphine earlier. I've now been moved on to paracetamol, so we'll see how that goes. I've been to the toilet now twice, which is great. It means I don't need the catheter putting in. So I have six incisions in total. Um, and one with the drainage tube in, so I'm not looking forward to that getting taken out tomorrow, but it is what it is. They've got one of these incisions right in the middle of my tattoo, which is fine. But yeah, I have these weird, if you can hear that, I have these like really weird like compression, I have compression socks on and then I have these like air things that like squeeze in my legs. I think it's to stop blood clots. I've not really managed to eat much, I had some fruit when I came out of the ICU which was horrific by the way, like, I woke up from the morphine, uh, not morphine, I woke up from the general anaesthetic and I immediately was in the most worst pain I think I've ever been in my entire life and so I had morphine put on a drip straight away um, and I was still in agony so I tried to lay on my side, please don't don't try and lay on your side when you just come around from general anaesthetic because you'll do what I did and throw up. I don't really remember much about being in there because I was just like constantly in and out of it sleep wise because of the morphine and the general anaesthetic and stuff. Um, so yeah I had some fruit when I got back into my room but I only managed to stomach two pieces of watermelon and some kiwi and I'd ordered like fruit, jacket potato and cheese, ice cream and I couldn't even just look at the jacket potato and ice cream so that had to be sent back and then my dinner which was meant to be leek and potato soup for starter and a curry for dinner I couldn't eat any of it and to be honest they asked if I wanted the leek and potato soup and I said yes but it's not come so I'm guessing I'm not having that tonight I'm currently eating some crackers, some whole whole grain crackers and some butter that they've kindly provided me with. Walking, I've just been, like the first time I had to be, it was like bedpan situation and then after that I've been walking to the toilet. Um, but it's horrific, it's so painful. Um, I'm just so fed up with being in this bed already though. And I'm in here for another day and another night and then potentially like some of that next morning. Depending on how my everything goes. Um, the surgeon came in and spoke to me a little bit but not about everything because I was kind of out of it. He said he would come back tomorrow morning to talk to me and I'm a bit more with it. Um, but basically they found, they found some stuff in my pelvis. He didn't necessarily say endometriosis because they needed to send it off for a biopsy to make sure it is. And he said they, they managed to get it all out and there was none in my diaphragm which is amazing so 
that's not spread that far up but I do have six incisions and I have one at the top of my chest like kind of here and I have one just below that one I think and then one in my belly button and then one really quite far down and then two on each side and on my right side is where my drainage tube is and that's where they originally found fluid on my MRI so I'm guessing that's why when I went down for my when I went down to the theater the anesthesiast anas anas what's the word anesthesiast anesthesiast person that gave me my anaesthetic, <laughs> I'm not with it right now, I tried to find, he got a vein in my hand and he was like, oh, this vein doesn't lead anywhere and I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and then he did another one and the same thing happened and another one and the same thing happened and so now I have my cannula on the side of my hand and I've got two in at the moment. They don't have a catheter in, they didn't, they put one in for the surgery and then took it out before I woke up so that was great. I just, I just miss my cat and Jack so much, so all I can say is that I'm doing well, I'm trying to keep smiling, I have a lot of support around me, I have a lot of family and friends support, so that's kind of keeping me going right now, but yes, I will talk to you again tomorrow or in the night when I'm having a breakdown. <laughs> Good morning guys, so it's um, about, half, about 6 o'clock in the morning. I've got some peppermint tea here for the gas pain. I'm in quite a bit of pain today. Um, really bad gas pain in my shoulders and pain where my drainage tube is. It's so painful to even go to the toilet right now. I'm on codeine and paracetamol now, so I've come off morphine. And my drips are. I'm coming off my drip as well because the machine's not working properly apparently and I don't need them anymore. My compression things are being taken off, so that's good. Um, and I'll have that tube out today, my drainage tube, so hopefully that goes well and it's not too painful. Yeah, it's really painful. It's painful to walk at the moment, like really painful to stand up. I slept okay, it wasn't great. Now I have this kale salad I had yesterday for lunch. This is a kale salad. Hey guys, so I, this is the afternoon of the day after my op. I managed to have a bit of a wash and get changed. Um, I've had everything taken out, my oxygen, the only thing left is my drainage, um, blood bag. And I think they're going to come and take that out soon as I've managed to walk up and down the corridor like eight times now. Um, I might actually be going home today. I just have to see what they say, but um, the surgeon's happy with me going home. They did find endometriosis. Um, it's being run under biopsy at the moment, but um, they found it in my Douglas pouch, my left side of my pelvic wall. And they said they managed to get it all and that my fertility isn't affected. My what we thought my appendix was attached to my right ovary is actually it was just sitting quite low, um, so there's nothing wrong with that either. It's all good news. I'm just trying to get through the pain, push through it. Me in, been to the toilet. It's all going well. So yeah, I'm really relieved they've managed to find something. Sunday after my surgery. My surgery was on Thursday, so third day after surgery. Um, we're just leaving the apartment now. It's been a rough few days. I'm not even gonna lie. I'll have to update you um, later in the video. But yeah, um, 
I'm hoping the two hour car drive isn't going to be too bad on me but the car drive from the hospital to here was absolutely horrific so I'm not holding out for miracles but um yeah I'm just really tired and in quite a bit of pain I'm not gonna lie um I've been getting pain that I didn't think I'd be getting in certain places so yeah it's a bit it's a bit much but um smashing it i've been walking i managed to walk outside yesterday and to the square and back which is like near it's like probably a 300 yard walk in total um but yeah i'm doing okay i just can't wait to get home and see my cat and chill out in my own home i'm at home now and i have been for about five hours the car journey wasn't horrific but um i'm still in quite a bit of pain today and i'm actually struggling to breathe quite a bit today i think i think my lungs are basically just like forgotten how to work after general anesthetic um because i've not really been using them and i have asthma <laughs> like i say i've not been using them i have obviously been using them but I think um the lower sac or something it's quite common it's, it's quite common to have and I've got gas pain in my ribs still um and in my shoulders finding it okay getting up and down stairs so that's not too bad um I'm excited to see beam and Jack's nipped out. It's it's tough. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was not expecting it to be this hard. Um, but I will eventually get better. And I feel like I'm getting a little better each day. I need to start taking deeper breaths. Otherwise, I'm gonna end up not being able to breathe properly. <laughs> And my birthday's next Sunday, so I'm hoping I'm going to be a little bit better for that so that I can enjoy some nicer food than just what I've been eating, which is literally soup, like, soup and, like, I had pasta today for the first time. I am so gassy from all this gas pain. I wish it would just leave my body now. I've had enough. I'm getting quite bored now of just sitting here. But like my friends have got me some like colouring books and stuff to do and I've got things to watch and I, just, I know I need to rest like and just chill but it's so hard to I'm like such an independent person most of the time and it's hard to rely on someone else to help me with things as well and I'm just so used to being out and about and doing shit like I'm not a very sociable person like I'm not like I don't know um what's the word oh what's the word I'm not I don't even know what I'm saying anymore Bean. where's she going Come here. Come here. There she is. No. Oh, I missed you. Hey guys. So it has been a while. I'm on day eight. Day seven or eight. Post surgery. And I look rough right now, I'm not even lying, like I understand that I look really rough. It's been a journey, I am not going to lie to you. It has been a bloody journey the past week. Where my drain is, or has been, it feels like constantly like pulling. And I'm just a little bit worried that I've got some sort of like blood clot there or something. Pain everywhere else is fine, and um where I had my drain is actually still leaking a little bit which I am a little bit worried about so I'm gonna ring up and ask about that but I should be able to take my bandages off soon it is my birthday on Sunday so it's Friday today 
My birthday is on Sunday, I'm going to be 24. I mean, I'm really hoping that I'm well enough to even eat a Chinese, because to be honest with you, I have started eating properly again, but not like... I don't know whether I can even stomach it, you know, it's quite fried. Fried food, I'm not sure is a good idea, but I just feel like I need it. Like, what else can I have on my birthday? Like, it's not like I can even go out, even anyway, because of COVID, I can't even go out. I am mentally drained, I am emotionally and physically drained. Like, I'm going to need a good few weeks to get back to me as a person and feel a bit more human again and be able to actually do my job. Hey guys, so I thought I would give you a little bit of an update. I've just got out of the shower, so excuse the mess that I am right now. Um, but basically, I thought I'd show you because it's probably the easiest time to show you. I was going to show you yesterday, but it was my birthday and I didn't really get time. So I have, As you can see, I have taken off some of the plasters. I have, so I think we're 11 days pre, uh, post-op. So yeah, it's been 11 days now. I took some of these off yesterday. You can't even see like some of these but basically I have one here in my tattoo, one here, I have one there, you can see that, I have one in my belly button but that's quite hard to see, I have one down here but I'm not going to show you that one and I've left this one on for now because basically that's where the drain was and for up until a few days ago I was still getting some like leakage happening and I just wanted to make sure that it was definitely healed a little bit on the outside before I took this one off so I'm waiting for that one I'm pretty happy right now and you know what I can't even feel the pain like my endo pain seems I can't tell if it's just my nerves that are inflamed that's causing me the pain still but for the endo pain itself not having it right now which is brilliant It's been about two and a half weeks since my surgery and I am out on a walk and I thought I would bring you along with me. It's weird actually, since um, my operation like I've been going walking and I've not been on this long of a walk yet so this is my first really long walk and actually I'm finding it a lot easier to walk than I ever had with endo before. Like I'd get really tired easily, my knees would hurt, my pelvis would hurt, like I wouldn't be able to go very far. And now I'm finding walking just even just so much easier than it ever has been. Um, I mean, before Endo started with me, I was walking up Snowdon, like the mountain. I was going to the gym like for three hours every day after work. And then the Endo started and it just kind of stopped all of that for me. So I'm really hoping to get back into it all, start going back to the gym when I can. Going on really long hikes and just, just doing what I love again. Pain's actually getting a lot better um, it has been for the past few days to be honest with you. Um, I thought the pain after surgery was just going to stay forever and it doesn't. So I've been thinking about having some acupuncture done for my pain pathways from my brain to my um, like nerves and where the endo was and stuff because I think my body still seems to think there's some endo there which is completely normal so I'm going to get acupuncture to try and stop that from happening. But yeah I'm doing really well. I think I'm actually going to end the vlog here and give you an update in like two months time. Yeah, I think I'm going to end it here because I feel like this is a good point for me to end the vlog. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed it. I really hope it's helped a lot of people out there um, just to see what the process is like and what it's like to go through it. And I wish you all the luck and all the love and I really hope that if you do have endometriosis, the pain does go away for you at some point and you do get relief from it because it is awful disease and I won't wish it upon anyone. I just hope you're all doing okay and I will give you an update in about two months time. So see you later guys.